125 years ago, an explorer named Hugh Willoughby became the first non-Native American to cross the Florida Everglades from the Gulf to the Atlantic. We're going to try to retrace his steps. He made it with no maps and no GPS and none of the modern luxuries and technologies that we have today. So if Willoughby could do it, we can do it. The idea to recreate the Willoughby expedition was Kristoff's idea. I came upon uh, Hugh Willoughby's book, Across the Everglades. First, if I thought about it as just a great adventure with friends. The more I, I reread it, realized like this has actually has significance, importance in terms of preserving nature and uh, historical impact of the Everglades. I reached out to some good friends and see who was interesting and open-minded enough to uh, join me. My initial interest in recreating the Willoughby expedition on the 125th anniversary was historical in nature. I'm a historian, but the real opportunity of recreating Willoughby's expedition is the opportunity to advance science. Tracy Baker is a University of Florida professor, a water expert, a great outdoors woman, and she will be performing all of the scientific research and taking the water samples. Willoughby took water samples in about 13 different locations. Um, we know where those locations are because we have the GPS coordinates. And those uh, numbers, the analysis, serves as the baseline water chemistry for the Florida Everglades. So we're gonna to go to each of those locations and take those same exact water samples. To not only do the comparative chemistry analysis, but test for microplastics and PFAS and pharmaceuticals and look for antibiotic resistant genes uh, in our environment. I'm hoping that this will um, give the opportunity for young girls around the world to be able to explore and be able to do science in even the most remote, potentially dangerous environments. We're loading the gear for the 2022 Willoughby Expedition, repeating what Hugh Willoughby did 125 years ago this year. So we start in the salt water of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, team, say goodbye to civilization. Oh, we go up the brackish water of the Harney River. Charlie Arizoza is our guide. He's perhaps the most experienced uh, paddler in the Everglades. You might wonder how we figure out where to go. It's the secret TV screen that Willoughby didn't have. And we're wearing our mosquito netting. Uh, bugs are out with us. It's uh, getting near dusk. And um, we need to get there and try to set up camp before it gets any darker. So this is Cane Patch, it's a little tree island. It's where we're gonna spend the night. We transition through mangroves. We are going to start going through the mangroves to the sawgrass, maybe the toughest part of the trip. It will start to get an hour and an hour. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Don't wanna knock that blue bucket out. That's our toilet for the next six days. Here's where we gotta do a little limbo. So is this what you were hoping for, Tracy, when I talked you into this? You could be back in your the safe confines of your air-conditioned laboratory right now. Mostly fun being in a canoe with Harvey. He keeps it entertaining. <laughs> into what is behind me, which is pristine sawgrass, fresh water that you can bend over and drink the water. Oh, we're out of the mangroves, and now we're in the grass. We don't know exactly where we're going, and we are in the middle of, I don't know, 100 miles of Everglades, looking for a small wooden platform. Tracy, any final words for your loved ones? We spent last night on this platform. Morning, Tracy. Morning. She's uh, out here in our annex near the guest house. Kristoff, ready to roll. Tracy, you ready to roll? Doing a great job paddling, Trace. <laughs> we once again are not at our destination as the sun is going down. And I'm not sure if we even know how to get to our destination. 
And I have to say, Tracy is pretty excited about another night of paddling through snake infested Everglades. And we are stuck at night in the sawgrass. Charlie's in the water. We're really stuck at the moment. We're hoping we'll make it through. So, we'll sign off for the moment. We're on the L67 dike about five miles south of Tamiami Trail. And that is Explorers Club member Dak Patriarca flying in with Kent Anderson and his film crew. So these are the tests to mostly replicate the samples that Willoughby took. Last night trying to get through that was in the dark, um, being bit by mosquitoes and having a difficult time was probably the lowest part. But we made it this far. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, just because we love it so much, we decided to do another day of bushwhacking through the sawgrass. When the paddles don't work, you grab the sawgrass, hopefully with cut-proof gloves, and you pull your way through. So we are on day four of the Willoughby Expedition. This is our last day in the sawgrass if we survive it. We thought we'd make it a little more challenging than just open water paddling, which anyone can do. I'm really doing this for Tracy. I mean, she wanted one more day of this. There's a reason why no one has done this in 125 years. I'm trying to get over there to the Tamiami Trail Bridge to go under it for night four, but we are stuck in this. Here's where we came from. We had to carve our own path. That little trail did not exist. Having a good time yet, Tracy? And then we eventually transition into the area impacted by humans. And that is suburban Miami-Dade County. This is how we drag the net to find microplastics. The canal systems, uh, we go past uh, uh, gaming casinos and Miami International Airport. So we will get to witness every type of cross section of South Florida. Uh, and I think that in itself will provide a unique juxtaposition of what it used to look like and feel like and what it is today. Campsite for night six of the Willoughby Expedition. Down the Miami River through one of the most urbanized areas in the world, the heart of Miami with 70 story buildings around us. So we're hoping to be done mid afternoon tomorrow, which would be day seven of the Willoughby Expedition. A lot faster than our friend Hugh Willoughby was able to do it. It took him many weeks. All of the testing done. You'll notice all the equipment is out of the canoe. This is the lightest we've been on the entire expedition. There's Tracy's family. I'm hoping my kids, my daughter and my son see that, you know, it's good to go after adventure, follow dreams and things you believe in. We are crossing the finish line. This Folks, is the end of the Willoughby Expedition. Congratulations, Chris. Congratulations, Tracy. Well done. We did it. 100 miles across the Everglades, seven days. As role models for our children and our youth, it's important to show them that you could do uh, hard things carefully, uh, well planned, uh, and that it's worth doing hard things in life.